Hi, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So thanks so much for tuning in. Got a brand new art video here. I've been working a lot lately for different projects for Marvel Comics and DC Comics, some comic book projects, tons of covers. And I'm, I'm posting about when those, those comics actually hit the comic shops. So it, I post about that on my social media. So if you're not following me on social media, all the links are, uh, to my accounts are listed in uh, the video description below. Um, but th that's been keeping me so busy, I haven't been able to do as many art videos, but here we get a chance to draw the Scorpion. The Spider-Man villain, the Scorpion, one of my favorite villains. I really love the look and design of this character. He's really fun to, to draw and really pairs well with Spider-Man. So we're just drawing the Scorpion here. Gonna do a pencil art video on an Amazing 15 1962 reprint facsimile sketch cover. This is an actual uh, reprint of the first appearance of Spider-Man, which was in 1962's Amazing Fantasy issue number 15. Um, it's a reprint comic, comic book on the inside. Not a comic book, but a comic book. And uh, they uh, made this limited edition sketch cover here. So uh, maybe you've seen me draw uh, some Amazing Fantasy sketch cover illustrations here on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna do a new one with uh, the Scorpion. So, uh, so let's get to work. All right, so let's get the uh, scorpion going here. Let's see. Um, it's gonna be kind of a three quarters body shot, not a full body. Just gonna lightly rough in the shapes and then we'll tighten up as once, once I get the basic pose down. I like to pencil real lightly, so in case I need to erase, I have that option. Like right now, I kind of don't like how I'm using the space here, so I'm gonna course correct, try again. Using a kneaded art gum eraser, K-N-E-A-D, like you knead bread. It's a kneaded, you can knead this eraser and re, you know, position it into a way you need to, to erase maybe fine areas or big broad areas. So let's see, let's try this again. I'm trying to think of the character of the, uh, the scorpion. How would he move? Scorpion is an arachnid, just like a spider. Um, if I remember my ninth grade biology correctly. Um, I think that's something you learn in biology class uh, or just general science. I believe, if I remember correctly, arachnids or scorpions and spiders are, and ticks are all arachnids. So I'm gonna wanna kinda, he's often, scorpion's often hunched over, probably carrying that big old tail on his back isn't great for the, uh, for the posture. So, um, so just kind of just some generalized shapes here that we can then build off of. Keeping in mind uh, the different muscle groupings like the shoulder to the bicep, the tricep over here down to the forearm muscle. And uh, I've done this a lot of years so a lot of this is kind of second nature to me, um, so I just kind of go on autopilot, but it's just that continued study and practice, study and practice. But hopefully by watching what I'm doing here, you can kind of pick up some of the shapes that I'm working with. The muscles bend and stretch, or they, they contract, I should say contract and stretch. Uh, depending on how the arm or leg or torso is posed. Kind of his glove there, the top of his glove. And then let's see, let's have his other hand. Get the knuckles in there. I like to do the knuckles. Knuckles tend to arc from index finger up to the middle finger, down to the ring, down to the pinky. Kind of did the same thing here. Though the pinky knuckle is kind of a little bit more hidden and the inside of his palm there. 
So he's kind of got those kind of uh, ah hands, sinister claw-like. Um, positioning. So I figured out where his shoulder is and where I want his hand to be and now I'm going to kind of have to bridge the gap here with uh, this forearm and upper arm. So I'm keeping in mind the shapes of the muscles and uh, how they look when they foreshorten because the, the from the wrist we're going back to the elbow and then up to the arm so so I'm trying to ride those waves if I can use some surfing terminology there and then the top of the glove kind of really helps me show the the volume of that forearm as it curves all the way around. I wouldn't draw a flat line that would flatten out his arm. I need to show that that curve and because it's foreshortening we're going to see that roundedness quite a bit more. And with the the banded metal, or I call it banded metal, I don't know if it's necessarily metal or some sort of mesh alloy or whatever they use to make the uh, the scorpion costume because Mac Gargan is trapped in this suit. There's a kind of a this ridge that goes around the arms, the torso, and uh, and the thighs, and uh, shins, calves area down to the boots. Uh, so that kind of helps show form and mass. And so I consider those angles. And when we get to adding those details, I'll, I'll share more about that kind of thought process as I go. So giving him some bulk. He's not as big as the Hulk or as Colossus from the X-Men. Maybe definitely not quite as big as Venom, definitely not as big as Venom, but uh, I'd say he's a bit bulkier than say maybe the Green Goblin. That's my personal take. Green Goblin's got some great uh, muscle mass to him, but I, I see the Green Goblin as a little more leaner. Uh, of a musculature, maybe more like Spider-Man, uh, because he's a goblin, and goblins tend to be spindly, but he's still quite muscular. But this isn't about drawing the Green Goblin. We're working on the Scorpion here. Uh, so I, I just have always preferred to draw the Scorpion just a little more beefy, just a little bit more muscular. Like I said, not super muscular, not, not Venom level or Hulk level, but... Uh, Definitely a little bit bigger than, uh, actually here, quite a bit bigger than uh, Spider-Man. I think it makes him a little more menacing as a scorpion. Though interesting fact, if I remember this fact correctly, again, my scorpion knowledge is, I've had to use it in quite some time when I grew up in Texas, but the sm if this is correct, we can go to Google to uh, fact check this, but I believe the smaller the scorpion, the more potent the, uh, the venom, oddly enough. If any of you are scorpion experts, feel free to leave clarification in the comments below. I really should have double checked my scorpion research before starting this video. Just going off of memory here. My memory might be a little bit flawed, but it sure seems like that was what I remember learning about scorpions. Anyhow, so we got the thighs here. The thighs, uh, one, one coming forward. So we got the quad there, and can't remember the name of all the thigh muscles, as I remember one other pro artist saying, it's like, you don't have to know the names of the muscles, you just pretty much need to know how to draw them or where to put them. All right, and then I got a, man, I didn't leave much room for his 
his scorpion tail here. So I could probably put it over this shoulder here. We'll just have it going up behind the, uh, the logo. Might to tone down the bulk a little bit. That's why I like to sketch real, real loosely. Put that stinger on there. I want to tone this mass down just a little bit. So I think I want to angle his face maybe a little bit differently. So so I've kind of angled his eye line. The nose line, a normal human nose, would be halfway from the eye line to the chin. But he's kind of got this weird kind of almost non-nose, just kind of nostrils there. I don't know if that's affected his real nose or, uh, or he just never really had that much of a nose prior to getting put in the suit. But it uh, could be the way the costume affects his nose. Some cheekbones in here. And the mouth line right there, but he usually is in a state of perma grimace. He's always got the, not always, but tends to often have kind of wild, crazy eyes. I think being trapped in this suit would drive me nuts. All right, this is kind of coming together. Let's, uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of erasing of some of the guidelines here and just kind of tighten up the pencils. So y'all can see how I pencil a bit tighter than I often do in these videos. Let me uh, sharpen my pencil. I forget, forgot to mention I'm using a Statler Mars HB pencil here. So oftentimes I use a mechanical pencil. Often, But when I'm breaking down shapes, I like to use a pencil like this just because the the broader pencil lead can help me get those big broad shapes and lines. Um, I use the mechanical pencil maybe more so um, when I'm looking for the finer to get those finer details. Just kind of use the needed art gum eraser just to kind of lighten up the lines here. I can still see my basic shapes but now I can come in here and put in the the tighter detail and it's a little more clear. So I can start working the contour shapes which is this outside line here. It's the more of the contour. I'm trying to keep the art straight up and down so I'm actually repositioning myself to uh, hit the area I want to draw where usually I would uh, just turn the turn the art all different directions. So in per for purposes of this video. So y'all can see it upright. I'm kind of moving around the art. So 
It's got his little Adam's apple right there. So just kind of normal, fairly normal lighting, just kind of maybe more from above. So his jaw and chin would cast a shadow onto his neck. So I don't, you might see just a little bit of that other side of his ear from the angle of his head here. Let's try these facial features. Now I'm going to switch to my Unikuratoga 0.3 lead, HB lead mechanical pencil so I can really get these uh, finer details of his face, or his, especially his, like his eyes, um, nice and tight and clean. We don't see his eyebrows because the marking of his mask cover his eyebrows, but I can use the line of the marking of the mask as kind of the angle, the arc of his of his eye of his brow, of his eyebrow, to help convey via the mask the uh, the angle of his angry eyed brow. So we have this black marking, not unlike Spider-Man's. Bit of a different shape, but uh, we've got this marking around his eye. I guess both being arachnids, they share a similar black mask shape around the eyes. So giving him some big, wide, Crazy angry eyes. Put in the eye, uh, iris and pupil here in a moment. Want to do the other eye, ball and mask marking first. So some crinkles around the eye. Because his head's just a little bit slightly turned this way, we don't quite see as much of this side of the marking on this side of the face. If I haven't mentioned it before, this is a uh, amazing Spider-Man or no, I'm sorry, the Amazing F Fantasy 15 facsimile sketch cover. This is a reprint of the first appearance of Spider-Man in the comic book series, the last issue of the series, Amazing Fantasy, issue number 15. And so uh, this is a reprint with this all new sketch cover. Scorpion does not appear in this comic, but Spider-Man does. And since Scorpion's a Spider-Man villain, hence the choice and what I had in my sketch cover collection. A lot of people ask, where do you get your sketch covers? I get mine at the comic shop and sometimes uh, from comic shops that are that sell on eBay. I'll search just whatever characters and blank sketch cover and see what's see what comes up, see what's available. So we're gonna put in that kind of just nostril, nostrils only nose. Still need to finish his eyes. And I will be doing that here in a moment. Right 
now I try to see about roughing in those eyeballs. So I'll be switching between the Statler Mars uh, wooden pencil, HB lead, to my Unikura Toga mechanical pencil with 0.3 HB lead back and forth. Only two pencils I'll be using here for this video. If there's a change up, I'll be sure to let you know, but it should just be these two. So I'm going to come in with my kneaded art gum eraser and just kind of work in this little tiny nib here. Just going to do a little slight erasing there. Then come in, really darken up that uh, iris. Now I like to do, or the pupil, pupil, no, iris is the color part, that's right. Iris is the color part, and then the pupil is the little black part in the center of the eye. So I like to do a little teeny tiny uh, pupil, because it makes him look a little, a little angrier, a little, a little kind of just that enraged, like the, 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 the pupils have dilated real small. If I made the pupils a big black pupil, um, it would be, it would kind of make them look, I think, too, uh, too innocent looking. It's the wrong visual cue for me for what I, I want to convey here with the scorpion. All right, so now we can start to put in this often raging, angry, grimace mouth, maybe beyond grimace, not to be confused with grimace from McDonald's. McDonald Land world. Don't know why that character is called Grimace, that big purple gumdrop, gumdrop creature. He seems a pretty amiable sort, but his name is Grimace. And actually this is a bit more than a Grimace. This is almost full on. I'm about to yell and scream. Got the pull of his facial muscles. Adjusting as I go, I want to pull this upper lip just a little bit more of a sneer, a little asymmetrical. And let's rough in kind of his teeth. See a little bit of the gums on this side because of that sneer pulling up a little higher. And from the angle of the teeth kind of arc back further inside of his mouth. And we've got his bottom row of teeth. Maybe we'll see some of his tongue.
So I kind of get this face going there. Now let's uh, draw in his stinger because it overlaps much of his body here. So I might as well get this roughed in, or actually it's already roughed in, penciled in a little with more detail. We'll kind of try to give it a little bit of a metallic sort of reflective look to it, at least to the stinger, the uh, this kind of housing area. Oops, let me slide that over. Sorry about that. Um, it's usually a darker shade of green. So again, if I'm thinking of my light source coming from above, the light's hitting here, so I'm going to have more of a shadow. on this side to kind of give it that kind of rounded, almost oval-like. I'm also keeping in mind the reflective light, so the light's coming down, the light that bounces back up onto his stinger housing. Kind of creating these shapes. It's kind of reflective, sort of uh, chrome like shape here. So it's kind of reflecting the environment around him. They could be a very organic, organic lines. Then with his uh, the actual stinger, maybe just kind of put a ridge there to kind of give it a little bit of a three-dimensional sort of look. I have a click eraser here I often use. I forget what brand this is. The I think it's called a knock. K-N-O-C-K. -K. Not not the same name as my name. But uh, sounds the same but spelled K-N-O-C-K. -K, the more traditional way. Alright, let's see. So uh the way people often confuse how to spell my name. So the Knock brand, Enoch, I think it was, uh, letter E, yeah, that's it, the Enoch uh, click eraser, in case y'all are interested in what brand that was. I got it quite years ago, I've been using it for quite some time. Okay, and then the uh, tail is going back behind the Amazing Fantasy letters. If they weren't there, I'd just be drawing an arc all the way around. And then we um, pull this down all the way to the shoulder. Make sure I have the right... Now it tends to go a bit, it's a bit wider as it connects to the base of his back and then tapers to a thinner tail as it uh, moves towards the stinger, oftentimes. Um, in the original version, where this was just one big shape, tubular shape, it, it was pretty consistent. It didn't have much of a taper to it. This is kind of more of the uh, Scorpion version, costume version 2, which I think became more popular in the 70s through the 80s into the 90s. Um, where they, they, they added this more stinger type um, element. Slight, slight variation from the original design from the 1960s slash early 70s, I think. I don't know, I wasn't reading comics then. I was, wasn't even born yet when uh, Scorpion originally came on the scene. I didn't read reading comics till 
I was a teenager, so by the time I started reading comics, he had more of this sort of look rather than his original look. So this is the, the design I know a bit better, that I remember better from my young days of starting to collect and read comics. All right, so, uh, oops, I'm so sorry if I had that off screen. I keep forgetting I'm zoomed in, my apologies, gang. So I just brought these lines around like this. Try to do better about remembering to stay on, on screen. And then I was just roughing in, or tightening up. I keep saying the word roughing in, uh, but tightening up this shoulder. How the neck and face overlap this part of his shoulder, because he's slightly angled to our right. See, am I still on screen there? Are we still good? Yeah. Start to rough or <laughs> draw in. Gotta stop saying the word rough every time. Uh, start to draw in these uh, shoulder muscles. Maybe throw in a little shadow there where the the tail is starting to overlap. All right, now uh, let's see. Can head down this one arm. I like to try to work foreground first. So I'm switching here to his right, is that his, yeah, his right arm. So I can keep things in the foreground, uh, or keep penciling things in the foreground first, then I can layer in whatever's behind him underneath. He okay, wears darker gloves, he's pretty much all green. For those of you that are not familiar with Scorpion, uh, he's um, all green, but different shades of green. So certain parts like this part of his stinger and his gloves, boots, and trunks here will be a dark, it will have a lot of uh, kind of darker shades um, to help convey uh, the different shade of green, the darker shade of green. Just want to double check my hand pose, each section of the finger, the way it bends. And how they overlap. Like that pinky is just behind that ring finger. A little kneaded eraser lightening up of the lines, and we already have that thumb there. Now I can come in and one, make sure I'm well on screen here. And let's tighten up these uh, fingers here. So again, uh, as I'm working with the darker part of this part of his costume, thing I'm keeping in mind, light coming down. So it's the underside, the side furthest away from the light source, it's going to have that darker area to help convey the darker color as well as the shape 
and form of the, the finger. I'm going to just do that for each finger, each one in their its own position. I oftentimes like to make the shape of the hand that I want to draw, the hand pose, so I can look at that as a reference. How does the, how does the uh, hand or fingers bend? What are the shapes that each digit makes? So that is a, a helpful thing. So we got the palm here. up to the thumb. I think I had that thumb set a little too high. have the ring finger next. So I'm keeping in mind what's falling behind the middle finger. And how is it bending? Then the pinky finger. There we go. So that's that takes care of that hand. We'll go ahead and connect the forearm and upper arm while we're over here. Then we can just keep moving our way that direction. So we've got the bicep. Tricep. Now the bot, uh, the his mask and body, aside from his gloves, boots, and trunks, are that lighter shade of green. So I'm not going to have as many dark areas necessarily in that part of his uh, costume, his his look. Helps dif differentiate between the uh, the two shades of green. We got the striations of his forearm. Kind of like weaves of a rope. So I'm, again, I'm always thinking about the light source. So if the light's coming from above, it's gonna hit on this striation darker on the underside. Hits the striation, darker on the underside. So we got the back of his hand here, which because of the angle, we can put in more shadow. And let's see. And we got that one other striation. that in and 
the very underside is going to have even more black so that helps create the full black or darker shade to the glove elbow there so okay so now we can work our way over to the other side of his chest and arms a little darker underneath at the bottom of his pectoral muscle. Kind of pulling out some of the, uh, erasing some of the structure lines I didn't necessarily need or need anymore. You put another little muscle striation there in his chest. Makes his chest rippling a little bit more. A little more shadow underneath this uh, one tricep here. All right, let's. Uh, so we move over this way, since this hand is in the foreground, I want to want to add, or I want to draw it first. So let's just double check, I like to call it double checking my math. Knuckle, 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 knuckle. Index finger, middle finger, ring finger pinky and thumb make adjustments where needed I'm adjusting the spacing of those knuckles and the back of the hand striations I know them like the back of my hand dad joke sorry uh, Form muscle striations to the elbow, then up. Okay, so that should give me enough to work with. Actually, I want to lighten up these uh, structure lines so I can come in with the detail lines. So let me double check, make sure it's well in screen. In camera frame, I guess I should say. Just getting that kind of foreshortening bend to each digit of the finger. the hand to the thumb don't see much of the palm from this angle because we're seeing so much of the back of the hand the palm is on the other side of this here that's okay Got those back of the hand striations Causing shadow from the back of the hand. A little cleanup as I go. More than likely we'll do an inking video of this piece if y'all are in for that. If you are, be sure to let me know in the comments. 
if you'd like to see this piece inked as well. Let's uh, start to work on that forearm, pulling it back to connect to his upper arm, and then we'll just ride up here to his shoulder and get that all figured out. see. Oops, kind of bounced a little bit all over the place. Fortunately, most of all of this is in frame. Apologize if any part wasn't. Just trying to figure out the uh, striations. Just need to turn my uh, canvas here a little bit. Let me double check, make sure I'm on on screen, on on uh, in frame, I should say. See if about putting in these darker areas. Just kind of mirroring what I did with the other arm, but keeping in mind the different angle and position. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, we're going to finish out penciling the rest of his body and then we'll put in the uh, the uh, banded lines that go around that go around him so let's hit the uh, midsection they rough in those abs just a little bit better
Now because of the uh, angle of his body, how his he's hunched over, I have a little bit darker lines through the uh, lighter green part than we have his darker trunks, but because there's a little bit, I want to convey a little bit more of a shadow here through the midsection area because of the uh, the way his body is posed. Okay, so let's uh, start to tighten up the abs. I'm considering the the darker part of his trunks, which it would be the darker green. Keeping in mind the the way the trunks might bend or fold, as well as the muscles connecting from the midriff area down to the thigh area. Start to work in the details of his legs. Get that quad muscle there, outer part of the thigh, some of the inner thigh muscle striations. Bring that forward thigh into play here. bottom part of that thigh there, got the knee, just do a little clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. Now we want to put in the the banded metal or the banded. I keep saying banded metal because I think of that with Iron Man, classic Iron Man or uh, Colossus. So we're going to start with the tail here. 
and the curve is going to be based on the direction of the tail. So I have to keep that in mind. I don't want to switch or change the direction. So I'm going kind of in a backwards C sort of shape because I want it to convey the direction of it. So going this way is not the direction I plan on going. Uh, it's the other way. So I want to keep that consistent. And the arc of this curve may change depending on the direction of the, uh, the tail or when we get to different parts of his body. So right now I think I'm pretty content with this direction here. We're going to put some uh, some kind of reflected metal detail through here. Put, sorry gang, got to change the direction here of the uh, artboard so I can pencil this in a little bit. When I say artboard, I mean the sketch cover canvas that I'm working on. Uh, so I can get that angle just right. We'll turn it back around there. So it kind of gives some, some depth there a little bit. Maybe a little bit more shadow here from behind the shoulder. Clean up some of these sketchy lines around the neck area. So now we want to go start going around his body. So we're going to start midway here through the shoulder area. So it's going to come just below the, uh, the clavicle here, and then back up and around. So it's because of the angle, we're kind of looking down this way. So the the bands are going to circle in from a very specific direction. So the next we'll do the chest first, which does meet up with the shoulders. There will be a, a bit of a transition as it goes from, sh from the chest area down to the shoulder area. And pretty much this one, this one band right here is that kind of point where it, it, it changes from chest to arms. And uh, these are wide bands, not the tighter bands like you'd see on maybe classic Iron Man's gloves or even on Colossus from the X-Men on his body. He has a bit tighter bands oftentimes. Let's see, I don't like how I angled that because it should be a bit more curved because we are angled a little bit more away from the viewer. Okay, so uh, I know I can do the forearm here. Oops, it was a little off screen. Sorry, I just mimic what I did there like that. And then it connects here. We're starting to transition from forearm now to upper arm. So I'm just kind of eyeballing where these curves would go. Don't have to put a lot of line weight to them. They're just simple bands, B-A-N-D-S, bands. We might kind of give it maybe a little bit of a metallic detail just for fun and coolness sake. Now let's work on the other arm. Make sure I'm back on in frame. It's going to mirror the same angle as the glove because it's wrapping around similar part of the body. Then we, the angle changes as we move up his arm. Here we are kind of hitting that transition area. Might actually kind of curve up and then back towards his back. It's kind of one of those weird transition places. We can kind of make up the rules as we go along, provided that it doesn't look too off or weird. Or 
unbelievable. And now let's uh, put the bands on his legs. So we'll start with this uh, leg over here first. Just a little, little more cleanup. So this leg's kind of coming more straight down so the curve is not as drastic because it's not quite coming at us as much as the other leg. Now we've got this leg here, which is going to be a bit more drastic of a curve because of the leg coming at us. Wide bands, not tight, thinner bands, but wide in between each line. And then to the knee there, and that pretty much takes care of that. Now, uh, I was thinking of maybe kind of giving his, his body almost like a bit of a metallic shine uh, to it. A little bit like I did with the tail here. So I'm just going to kind of go through here and at certain points kind of put that reflective texture in. Usually at the, to differentiate each shape. Maybe a little bit more here at the the uh, muscle striations. Here on the arm. So a little, little detail there on the elbow. Oh, I wanted to put some of the banded metal around his neck. I forgot about that one part, so let's do that. So we're going to go one more round, around that way, on, across his shoulder, and then one around just the neck muscles. And it kind of helps create some depth, too. So I'm kind of taking a little bit of an artistic liberty here to make his his uh, body look a little bit more of a shiny banded metal. A lot of people ask, how do I draw, sh make that metal shine with lines? And this is kind of my approach to it. So this is kind of a chance to address a topic a lot of people have asked about, uh, whether they're drawing Iron Man or Silver Surfer or Colossus or anyone who has a lot of metal in their look or design. And the, the you know the the shine is reflecting the 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 environment around the character, no matter which character you're drawing, uh, and you know whether it's their metallic armor or body or accessory they use or lens in their their uh, mask, maybe like Spider-Man. And uh, off the, if you look at pictures of Chrome, like actually you know Google Chrome. Don't, don't you can use Google Chrome to search for Chrome. You can use Google to search for Chrome. That was totally unintentional, the whole Google Chrome thing. But you can search Chrome. You know, look at Chrome. Is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> in the most awkward way possible. Uh, look for Chrome, and and then uh, look at how it's kind of reflecting the world around it. It's it's going to be organic. Is the point I'm trying to get to. So uh, let it be that organic reflective shape. We don't have to overthink it too much, but we do have to put some thought in, into where we're placing those, those um, reflective surfaces, the shapes. I'm keeping in mind where would we see that reflection? And because it's reflecting like sky well, it's kind of weird because it's such a weird angle here, but like, say with the forearm here, it's like sky and then the earth or environment, the background around it, which is going to be more towards the base. 
So a lot of these are going to be more towards the bottom shape of whatever, the bottom portion of whatever shape this is that we are uh, rendering. A little bit of his chest there that's going to connect up here. So had a little dead space that we needed to fill in. And now for the uh, thighs to the knee, am I still in frame? Good. And inner thigh. So see, we have this chunk of this one little chunk of inner thigh. Just putting that little reflective part. This is the earth. This is the sky. Reflected light. And bada bing, bada boom. We got some reflective textures on his his bodysuit, whatever this is. I, I can't remember what what type of material this is. Some could see it as metal, some could see it as some sort of hybrid alloy mesh of some sort. I mean, any fictitious sort of, uh, you know, uh, material from the Marvel Universe. Uh, but whatever it is, it's got him trapped inside. So I would think if you're gonna create a suit like this and you're gonna have this kind of weaponry on it, this scorpion tail weaponry, it should be somewhat armored to one degree or another. So I'm just really taking the artistic license to really amp up that armored aspect of, of it to give a little quick tutorial and thought process on how I draw the shiny, shiny parts of a character's costume. So hope y'all don't mind the artistic license if I've drawn him maybe more shiny than we've seen him in the comics. Okay, and that pretty much takes care of uh, the pencil line art here for, for Scorpion. And uh, this is definitely a lot of fun to draw. I should probably put my pencil in my cover signature name on here at the very least. We'll just put it right over here. Because I want to share a, a shot of this on my social media. And all my social media links are in the video description below. So uh, if you're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I'm on, I've got all my, or whatever other social media, I think I have my have Tumblr and TikTok down there as well. Uh, feel free to follow me. And I also have my website down there as well. So you can uh, subscribe, or you can check out my website. You can actually... I think I'm still subscribed to the newsletter, which I never email out, but sometimes when I make a new posting, you can get an email notification of a new post that's gone up on my website. But I also link to all my social media from my website as well. So, uh, and that's toddknock.com. And also, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Subscribe to my channel, please. It helps me out a lot. It's a great way to support your favorite artists. And, uh, it uh, will help you stay posted to whenever I post a new art video. And feel free to uh, like and share this video as well. That's a big help as well. So subscribe, like, share, and comment. And then, uh, yeah, let me see. Let me uh, just, oops, pull this back a little bit. And there is the scorpion in pencil, tight pencil. Usually I don't pencil this tightly when I draw my, uh, do my art videos here, especially the pencil videos. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's start the sign off here. All right, and there we go. Here is the actual uh, sketch cover, um, the pencil art. This is a lot of fun to do. Like I said, scorpion is a lot of fun to draw. Uh, I would like to do an ink video and maybe a color video as well. So if you're interested in seeing inks and colors, please let me know in the video description below in the comment section. Please post uh, if you'd like to see inks and uh, colors. And if 
I get a sense that a lot of y'all want to see that, then uh, we'll, we'll make those videos happen as well. Um, thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks again for being so patient while I get try to you know keep up with my work deadlines and try to come visit my YouTube channel as frequently as I can to post new content. I hope to try to keep this going a little bit more regularly, but it's really tough with my current deadline schedule. Lots of fun projects that I'm working on. So I want to say thank you for all of your support. And uh, yeah, I hope y'all um, are hopefully learning something here. And I want to wish you all the best with your art, your art journey. If you just like to come and watch and, you watch and you have no interest in drawing, totally okay. Thank you for coming and watching my videos and supporting as well. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share this video, and leave a comment in the comment section below. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again real soon. I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun.